Hey everybody, I'm Argleflump. Welcome back to Jenny LeClue, Detective. Okay, so she wasn't really dead. That would be silly. No, Jenny was alive and well and ready for another perfect day in Arthurton. Okay, so, uh, no murder in your murder mystery? Are you sure about that, Finkelstein? I mean, yeah, okay, it was pretty cool to start out with a, a, a fake-out cliffhanger with Jenny being dead. But now we need an actual mystery if she's not really dead. Looks like it's Halloween time. Whoa. What? What the? What a mess. I should investigate. It looks like somebody knocked over some trash cans. Maybe it was a cat. I'm more interested in uh, figuring out what happened to uh, th these buildings. Did people just throw crepe paper all over these buildings? Why? Bonfire celebration? What? What's going on? What's going on? I don't know. First, let's check out, check out this situation. Whoa. What is this? No, seriously, what is it? I, I, I want to check it out. Jenny had an instinct for sorting treasure from trash. To the untrained eye, this was just a discarded piece of an old postcard. But to Jenny, it was a mystery waiting to be solved. I should keep my eyes open for any other pieces. The case in the puzzling postcard. Okay. I think we saw that in the, the journal, right? In the journal, at the very end of the journal, we have one of the six postcard pieces. Let's see if we can find all the others. I bet they're just hidden throughout the game. No, but seriously, what 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 knocked over the trash cans? Is that something The notice board was awash with flyers, personal ads, and the occasional piece of gum. I'm amazed anyone can find anything on here. Fortunately, Jenny had a useful trick to use in a situation like this. Mom always says, a great detective eliminates the noise. Focus on the details, and you'll find clarity in the chaos. So let's see. Let's tap the enter button. Mystic Healing with Gloria. Monthly Stargazer. Textbooks. Pop-up party. Missing cat. I wonder if anyone else reads this junk. Hold on. What's this? Town oh, curfew. Oh no. They've extended curfew hours. Again. 9 p.m. to sunrise? That's ridiculous. But necessary. Power outages had become a regular occurrence in town. It was dangerous to be wandering around after dark. It won't be long before we need a permit to go out at all. So why... Why... Why do we need a... a, 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 a curfew just because it's dark? Hmm. Yeah, very mysterious. Very mysterious indeed. There could be more to these power outages than what we're seeing. So Trevor is the missing cat, and somebody tried to eat the textbooks. That's weird. Great. Okay. Let's see. It looks like Jenny can go to the left some more. What's this? What's in the shrub? Hey, you! Oh, hi there! What are you doing back there? Well, I was pruning, but then I discovered the cerulean bugberry bush. Discovered? These bushes are all over Arthurton. Actually, this is an incredibly rare bloom. There's nothing rare about Arthurton. I beg to differ. Arthurton has many beautiful and exotic plants. Um, Jenny does not seem very interested in these plants. Looks like a regular old bush to me. Wow. Some people just don't appreciate the wonders right in front of them. I guess that's why I'm one of the lucky few working in Dean Strausberry's greenhouse. Anyway, I should get back to work. I want everything to be perfect for the Dean's retirement celebration. Hmm. That was strange. 
Yeah, yeah, um, something about these blue plants. Weird. Okay, so, uh, I can't do anything over here to the left. Then I suppose I was intended to go to the right. Now, just based on his reaction, I'm kind of curious about those blue plants. It's like, what, what are they? Hmm. They did look the same as all the other plants. They just had, well, some flowers on them. Oh, so maybe there is a goodbye party for this Dean Strauss-berry. Okay. Can I examine this board? No. Bonfire celebration on Saturday. Signs and decorations adorned the entire campus. A party to celebrate the Dean's impending retirement. They're having a bonfire to celebrate his retirement? Okay. That's a telephone booth. Who's this guy? Left! Left! I said left, damn it! Whoa! What part of left are you having trouble with? Language! My left or your left? My left. Obviously, I mean my left. Why would I mean your left? So you want me to move it the other way? Yes. Nothing would make me happier. If you're not careful, we're gonna have bronze brains all over the floor. They seem... busy. I should probably lead them to it. Yeah, they, these people seem like they're having a really hard time making this statue. Is that how statues are made? You make all the statue in parts and then you just put them together with, what, super glue? Anyway, this, this crane doesn't seem to be working. Maybe somebody should just take a ladder and, and climb up and attach the head that way. Oh, is this the Dean? I think that's the Dean. Yeah! Wow, the Dean, you've got a statue of yourself! Way to go! Hello, Mr. Strausberry. How are you today? Beloved Dean a jolly laughs gentleman. like Santa. The Dean was often seen shaking hands and kissing babies around town. He's also Mom's boss. But more than that, he was her loyal friend. What do you think, Jenny? The Dean had dedicated his life to Gumboldt, and the townspeople had spared no expense in their tribute to him. Quite a striking resemblance, Mr. Strasbury. It's a scary thing, Jenny. Retirement. Great excuse for a party, though. <laughs> what will you do when you're no longer the Dean? I've been trying not to think about it. This place won't be the same without you. Things change, Jenny. Time marches on, and we must do our best to adapt. It's going to be difficult, but I'm sure we will get through it. What do you mean, we? Do you think they made my belly too big? Ah, uh, maybe not big enough. Okay, so I think what he was saying there was sort of a metaphor for uh, her book series turning into a murder mystery series. You've just got to adapt to the times, Jenny. It, it can be hard to change. We're retiring the old Jenny Clue, bringing in the tough killer Jenny Clue. I'm gonna be nice. I like the Dean. He's my friend, so I'll be nice to him. It's probably just the perspective, Mr. Strausberry. <laughs> you are a clever one, Jenny LeClue. Speaking of which, have you been practicing your detective skills? Have I? Of course, always. Well then, I have a challenge for you. Ooh. I bet you can't guess what I ate for breakfast. At last, a real challenge for Jenny. What? No. A fiendishly difficult puzzle that would take all her wits to solve. Uh, no. What? What is this? Oh, fine. We'll solve his little mystery. <sighs> well, okay. Anything for you, Mr. Strausberry. Oh, how wonderful. But first, I need to ask you a few questions. Okay, we're gonna interrogate him. Ooh, interrogations. This isn't an interrogation. This is looking for clues. Okay, so let's find some clues on his person indicating what he had for breakfast. This looks like a clue. 
The Dean was a big fan of the Gumbolt Moonbeams. And not just because his son was a prominent figure on the team. Well, a bench warmer anyway. Well, I mean, he is the Dean, so it makes sense he would care about the school's team. Let's check this out. Missing button. Ew, it's not missing. It just had stuff on it. No, it's it's jam. Some sort of fruit. The Dean didn't button his shirt properly. It looks like a blood stain, but the seeds indicate otherwise. Okay, so he he <laughs> looks like he ate some fruit for breakfast. Something with jam, strawberry jam. Uh, what's this on his feet? For the Dean, being covered in plant life was not unusual. His work as a botanist was renowned. Looks like you're carrying some extra baggage today, Mr. Strasbury. Well, I do have a lot on my mind. I was referring to your legs. Oh, thank you. I have been doing my daily calisthenics. No, I, I mean the sticky stuff on your pants. What? Oh! It's Akers. I've been working on a new orchid hybrid in my greenhouse. They're beautiful, but the leaves are quite clingy. I will say, I am looking forward to spending more time in the dirt. You know, some random guy tried to talk to us about it, but uh, we basically ignored him. So, yeah, that's how that... That's how that happened. Okay, let's check out this ring. That looks like a thing we can check out. Okay, Ipsa S Potesta. Knowledge itself is power. Ipsa Scientia Potestas Est. Looks like Latin. Your ring sure looks old. It was made for my grandfather. He passed it down to my father, who passed it down to me. And when the time comes, I'll pass it on to my son. The Strausberry family had been champions of education for generations. What does the inscription mean? Knowledge itself is power. Ah, the inquisitive spirit I got it is right. a mighty thing, Jenny. And nothing is as important as the truth. All right. I like doing on-the-fly Latin translations and getting them correct. That's that's cool. It makes me feel smart. Although not as smart as Jenny LeFleu. His watch is slow. That's unlike the Dean. He's usually very punctual. Your watch is 45 minutes slow. Is it? Oh my! That explains why there was no cheesecake left in the cafeteria. <laughs> my head's not screwed on today. Thank goodness you noticed, or I'd be late for my meeting with your mother. Oh, really? She didn't mention anything to me. Oh, well, of course she wouldn't. It's nothing important. Why are you meeting, then? It's just, um, she's helping me finalize my, my plans for, uh... Your party? Yes, that's it. My retirement mm. party. Thank you. Are you okay, Mr. Strasbury? Of course. Now let me just fix my watch before I forget. <laughs> Both he and mom were being now, very we? secretive. I, 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 I have to wonder what's the truth. What, what is actually happening here? Hmm. Okay, I can magnifying glass stuff. Let's see this. I'm just gonna rip this letter out of his pocket, okay? A thick bundle of note cards poked out of the Dean's pocket. What's he keeping so close to his chest? Uh, You've been speech. making a lot of notes, Mr. Strasbury. Oh, I was intending to make a speech on Saturday. Why have you scratched out so much of it? Your mother suggested I keep it short, and quite right, too. I must have rewritten it 20 times by now. I just can't seem to find the right words. Interesting. Can I check out the spoon? 
Looks like he accidentally put a spoon in his pocket instead of his pen. It's got a coffee stain on it. Hmm. I've noticed with most of the things we find, Jenny puts away her notebook and then talks to him for a while. She did not talk about the spoon, though. She did not talk about the spoon. Looks like the final clue is the bow tie. It can't be dandruff. He has no hair. I have a hunch it's powdered sugar. Okay, so powdered so, sugar what do you and think, jam Jenny? and a spoon. Can you guess what I had for breakfast? Sure, Mr. Strasbury. I've got everything I need to solve this mystery. Yeah, we're solving it. What did okay. the dean eat for breakfast? Spoon with a coffee stain. And jam. So yeah, those two are, are are obviously it. I don't know, I think the bow tie might be part of it too. That doesn't quite add up. Let me give this some Not more the thought. spoon. Mm. Okay. Let's try that again then. Apparently the spoon is incorrect. Let's try the bow tie and the shirt button. Powdered sugar and jam, those go together for uh, what he had for breakfast. I do think the, the spoon with coffee indicates what he had for breakfast as well. He had coffee for breakfast. So he had a pastry. Jam uh, on his like shirt and powdered sugar on his tie. The evidence points strongly to the Dean's breakfast consisting of one, maybe two donuts. Okay, well, mystery solved, hooray! What else can I tell about the Dean's morning? Well, we know he had coffee this morning. Hmm, let's see. Actually, we need three things that talk about this morning. Hmm. Let's see, the, the watch is slow, and the shirt is wrong, and the spoon is kind of a mess, so let's say maybe the Dean was super distracted this morning? Is that it? This could be totally wrong. Yep, he's very distracted this morning. The Dean morning. had neglected to wind his pocket watch. The act of a distracted man. This resulted in his whole routine being thrown off. Which might explain why he has a spoon in his pocket instead of a pen. Solve that mystery too. Great, I'm a good You detective. had a donut for breakfast. Yes? I'm guessing... Let me see, it was reddish, so it's either strawberry or raspberry. I like raspberry better. Raspberry. <laughs> How did you know? That part was easy. You always have donuts for breakfast. But something else caught my attention. Oh? I think you have something on your mind, Mr. Strasberry. You are usually a picture of precision and punctuality. But today, there's a spoon in your pocket and your shirt button is undone. Yeah. My, my. You really are a LeClue. Your father would be so proud. Thanks. Well, I should be going. I'm meeting your son by the lake. <laughs> and I'm meeting your mother in the library. What a small world this is. Too small. A perfectly small world with everything in its right place. Who would want to change that? Pardon? Nothing. See you on Saturday. Oh, yes. Until we meet again. Jenny LeClue. So what was that random aside about her father? Um, is her father dead? Or did her father go missing? I, 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 I'm I, gonna guess he went missing a year ago. And yeah, her little sarcastic comments. It's like, why would you change? Why would you change anything in the Jenny LeClue universe? Wouldn't you want to solve mysteries where I stare at a fat man's belly and then deduce he had a a jam-filled donut for breakfast? Isn't that the most exciting mystery you could think of? Way more exciting than murder. 